from the most trusted names in local news, KDPG Sunday Edition. Good morning and welcome to the KDPG Sunday Edition. I'm Rick Dayton. If you think the last couple of years have been tough to deal with, imagine being a farmer. For instance, the last couple of months here in Pittsburgh, dealing with all kinds of rain coming on the heels of last year when you're dealing with record amounts of rainfall, and that certainly has created a challenge for farmers as it has pushed back the window for planting once again this year. It has created a challenge for farmers in many different ways. However, last week, the state legislature handed the farming business an assist. The Pennsylvania Farm Bill invests more than $24 million into the agriculture industry. The money will help farmers create business plans. It will enhance the growth of organic foods and also fund Pennsylvania's dairy investment program. That last bit is of particular interest to our first guest this morning. He is Rick Ebert, a dairy farmer in Westmoreland County, who also serves as president of the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau, the largest farmers organization in the state. Farm Bureau has touted that farm bill as a way to create some new opportunities for farmers. We're also joined by Joe Smidal, the editorial writer for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and it's great to have you here this Thank morning. You, you bet. So let's start, first of all, explain to those city slickers who don't even know what the Farm Bureau is. Help them understand what that does first. Okay, uh, Farm Bureau, we have about 55,000 members across the state. Uh, we have both farmer members and friends of Farm Bureau's, you know, people in the, the country that have an interest in farming or just even want to understand um, something about agriculture. Um, our main thrust is lobbying at the state and national level, uh, but we also do a lot of um, educational opportunities. Uh, we have a, Mobile science labs that go into school and teach kids about agriculture. Um, that's a foundation that we have. Um, but we do a lot of things with education and agriculture also. How much pushback or how receptive is the legislature in Harrisburg to what farmers are still saying today? I mean, farming has been a big part of Pennsylvania's economy for many, many years. Is there a change there in Harrisburg in terms of the, the reception of the message you're trying to talk? I, I think it just takes more of a learning curve for the legislator because a lot of them don't have a, a farm background anymore. Uh, but they're very receptive of us. You know, when we come in, you know, we're talking about life issues to us. You know, when they're dealing with a bill, how it affects us on the farm. So they want to hear from us how that bill affects us, how it can improve, or how it can actually uh, be detrimental to the farmer. I mean, I, I've, I've read that this farm bill is the biggest boost to farmers in a generation. And I have to wonder why it took so long, because so many farms have been lost in recent years. I mean, is it, is it too little too late? Uh, farm, you know, the farm economy is down for the past four or five years now. You know, actually total farm net income has been off over 50 percent. And I think it's just finally getting the message out to the legislators and actually, you know, enough of us saying we need some help out here. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is the first PA farm bill that, that's ever been passed in Pennsylvania. So they, they've actually you know, it's, it's nice to see the legislature and the governor take such an interest in agriculture because it's, it's the basics of the economy. You know, it's, you know, where things start. You know, we have so much infrastructure that helps support us. Uh, so there's a lot of jobs tied to what agriculture is. One, one of the goals of the bill, uh, I think, is to uh, encourage more people to get into farming mm -hmm. and to keep people who are in farming on the farms. Mm -hmm. How will this bill help? Well, there's several different aspects of the bill. The one about young farmers is there's going to be a tax credit for uh, an older farmer that either wants to sell his ground or wants to get out of farming and, and rent his property so that uh, older farmer can get a tax credit by um, providing that opportunity to a, a younger person. You know, the average age of a farmer nowadays is 58 or 59 years old, so. And the no. issue is that for many of them, younger children don't necessarily want to. They see how hard the work is, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. and, and so that makes it for them very, very difficult. You want to keep it in the family. You want to keep on doing it. But of, of your children, for instance, two of them, right, are not working on the farm. They're still involved in agriculture, right. but in a different capacity. How often does that happen? Uh, pretty often. You know, there isn't a lot of money on a farm. You know, you, you have to love that lifestyle. You know, when a person's, you know, growing up, you know, he has to make the choice whether, you know, he wants a lifestyle of farming, you know, enjoying the land, enjoying the animals, you know, and, and maybe not making a lot of money or going into, you know, business or a factory where you can have, 
you know, a, an easier life of, you know, 50 hours a week and, you know, pretty good income. If you had to give someone an idea of how many hours a week you work, what's that number? Oh, uh, probably between 80 and 90. That's just on the farm. That's not anything to do with Farm Bureau. That's the work that you're doing. Well, there. that's both, yeah. Okay. I mean, how much uh, on the farm? How much in terms well, of running the business? I mean, most of the time I'm on the farm, you know, I'm up by 5 in the morning. I'm usually eating dinner at 8 or 8.30 at night, so mm -hmm. it's, it's a long day, so. How, how important are value-added products, value-added enterprises to the future of farming, and how do you encourage the development of those things? I think that's where the real opportunity in agriculture is now. Uh, you know, it's, we've always talked, you know, your basic crops, you know, your dairy, corn, soybeans out west. You know, those areas probably will stay that way. Uh, but for Pennsylvania, you know, we have such a close tie to, to the population. So the value added products gives us a, an opportunity to make a better living and, and, and more income instead of just, you know, the dairy products or, or selling corn and soybeans and hay. Do you see more of that? People not just growing strawberry, but making strawberry jam and jelly? Yeah, the whole gamut, you know, there's a, there's a huge market out there for, you know, grow local, buy, buy local and that. And, and farmers that want to transition in something other uh, have, has real opportunity there. You know, instead of just growing the strawberries and have pick your own or something like that. They're, they're gr making the jams and jellies or, you know, somebody might grow some hops and, and some malt and barley and, and start to craft brewery and that. So. You start to do those sorts of things yeah. as well. Now, in addition to growing for your, what, 70 head of, of cattle that you've got there that you're mm -hmm. milking, you're also, soybeans is something that a lot of people have been talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can feed them, but you can also sell them. What about tariffs? What about some of these sorts of issues that are out there? And, and, and how does that affect Pennsylvania farmers? Uh, I mean, for farmers in general, it's a, it's a huge thing because for the United States, you know, we're an agriculture export nation. You know, we rely on our ag exports. I mean, it's a huge part of us. You know, 95% of the population live outside the U.S., so we rely on export markets. We're very efficient at what we do. Uh, so when these tariffs come to place, you know, the first place that other countries retaliate is agriculture products. Mm -hmm. You know, when the uh, tariffs went in for China, that was the first place, you know, they attacked with, was all the agriculture products. We ship to How does that affect the Pennsylvania farmer? I mean, because we think of, you know, some of the, the great Midwest in terms mm -hmm. of all they're doing is producing soybeans for export. Mm -hmm. Your farm is different than those farms. Does that hit Pennsylvania in the back pocket the same way? It, it still does, maybe not such the impact as it does out west because of the large farms there, mm -hmm. but still it affects the price. So, you know, two years ago, soybeans were, you know, $9.50, $10 a bushel. You know, when the tariffs went in place, you lost $2 right off the bat. Well, do you see a lot of diversity on farms? I mean, people doing some dairying, some growing of crops, just to try to, you know, have as many revenue streams as possible. Is that more prevalent? That's coming more back. You know, for a long time, there was a trend to specialize in what you did. Uh, but I think now with the farms, especially in Pennsylvania, you know, that they have to diversify. How are they doing that? In what ways? When you say diversifying in the farm, how do they do it? Uh, the value-added products, you know, somebody putting cheese on or a small bottling plant or a roadside stand. You know, for myself, you know, we did dairy for th close to 40 years now. This is the first year we have 50 breeding ewes on the farm, mm -hmm. you know, looking at a different market. Right. You know, there's a huge demand for lamb out there now. So. When you said you were doing dairy, you weren't bottling and selling. No, you were just, just producing and, and then yeah, shipping out. Yeah. Shipping Are you out. seeing more places trying to control their own product by putting in their own bottle? Or is that just so difficult to do because of the health considerations and because of the volume that the cost is prohibitive? Um, a little bit of both. And it depends on the area that you live in. You know, if you have access, you know, to a lot of uh, traffic that you could put, a, you know, a bottling plant in or make cheese, um, you know, that there is opportunity there. I mean, it's a, it's a market that you have to develop. You know, it just much, doesn't happen overnight. How much general support is there for agriculture and how important are fairs and granges these days? Uh, to keeping, you know, the public in tune with what you're doing and supportive of what you're doing? Uh, I think a lot of people have that interest. I mean, 
there's you know a, a huge generational gap from the people that came from the farm uh, to to the people now, but they're thirsty for information, and the fairs and you know the direct markets and that you know gives that opportunity for that person to come in and, and talk to a farmer, see how we produce things, how we raise you know our animals or or produce you know the strawberries or or the fruits and that. So. I mean, marketing is one of the skills that many farmers need today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's you know a transition for a farmer. You know, if you've if you've just you know milked your dairy cows and then shipped your sure milk to the bottling plant, you know, you've really never had that inter interconnection with right. with the consumer. Right, and that's, and that's been, becoming more and more important. And that's been an issue for farmers for a long, long time. They were great at tilling the land and getting the crops, but yeah. running a business was something that was very, very difficult mm -hmm. and cost a lot of family farms a lot of money. So thank you very much for being here and sharing your insight. We appreciate what you do, and, and thanks again for sharing it with our viewers. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Good stuff. When the KDPG Sunday edition comes back, we'll take a look at the U.S. women's soccer team and the run to the World Cup final. What effects does that have on soccer in Pittsburgh? A couple of people who are certainly right in the center of it as we continue on this Sunday morning.